All right, welcome back to Get Out the House Go Fish. Today I'll be showing you how uh, to mod a water snake trolling motor to fit where their Mirage Drive would normally go. This would work out great for those looking to get a deal on a used Hobie. Maybe that Hobie is being sold without a Mirage Drive, so you're getting a great deal on that kayak. Maybe you lost your Mirage Drive in the surf, it's broken. Hey, maybe you just want a break and uh, you've been out in the water for hours and uh, you just want to relax and enjoy the trip back to the launch area. So. I mean, those Mirage drives, uh, new are easily $600 for the GT models and you know $800 for the 180 drive. So what's a good alternative? This is it. All right, so I'm putting a link in the description for the Water Snake. There are two models, the T18S and the 24. Both are saltwater ready and you can get either one for under $150. The Water Snake is lightweight. It's got two speeds. It's got a forward and reverse. And uh, you also need a Mirage drive cassette plug which they run around $30 if you don't already have one. That's it. Now you just need a deep cycle battery and you're good to go. So this video, uh, I will walk you through step by step with doing the entire mod. One thing that you don't have to do is if you don't want to cut the shaft on the trolling motor, you don't have to do it. That's, that's your choice. But you still have to disconnect the head unit and disconnect the wires. All right, that's it. Let's get started. Once you take your trolling motor out of the box, first thing, make sure you have everything from your parts list. Next, measure how much you want to cut off the shaft if you choose to do that. If you don't have the tools, then don't worry. You can always do it at a later time or do a demo with a shaft uncut to see what you prefer. I personally measured from the bottom of the head unit and went 10 inches down the shaft and marked it to be cut. Now we know where we want to cut. Let's get that head unit off. If you look on the underside of the head unit, in each corner, there is a screw. Remove each of those four screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. After the screws have been removed, carefully open the top. Once open, there is a black button you will have to pull down and then tension will be released from the rear spring that is resting against the steering handle. Make sure you get a little pressure on that handle so it doesn't exit completely. Just pull it out just enough to clear the shaft and cables. It's always a good idea to take your smartphone out and take some pictures of where the cables are connected. That way, you won't be confused when putting everything back together. The middle blue jumper cable is the only one that will stay plugged in. Every other cable you have to unplug so you're able to remove the head unit. That plug you just squeeze together and it'll come right out. Remove these two screws, being careful not to let those metal tabs fall into the shaft. There's a screw running right through the shaft that secures the head unit to it. All you need is just a Phillips head screwdriver to take that out also. The head unit will slide right off and take a look at the top of the shaft here. If you're gonna cut this, this shaft, you're going to need to copy those holes just like that in order to put the head unit back on. So go ahead and slide everything off the shaft. This part you don't have to do, but it protects the wires. You get a half inch PVC to slide down over the wires and into the shaft, and it'll protect the wires as you cut. Now that the shaft is cut, measure it for the new holes to be cut. I used a 5 32nd drill bit. Then I used a Dremel tool to cut the notch out. Now to drill out a hole big enough and the cassette plug so the shaft can slide through. Take your time, go slow, a little at a time. You want a tight fit with very minimal movement once you have it in place. If you had this stop adapter with your kit, slide it on now. Go ahead and feed the wires through and, and then the shaft. After that, you want to start reassembling the head unit on top. And here it is, completely reassembled. 
The only thing that I added was this metal hose clamp above the cassette plug. Now there's a clamp above and below the cassette plug. Let's check the depth. We want it as close to the hole as possible to limit the amount of drag. Goes right in and locks in place just like the Mirage drives. Just checking to see how close the propeller spins to the hole. I like it. Tighten everything up and you're good to go. Well, like I said before, it's a cheaper alternative if you have uh, if you've lost your drive or maybe you purchased a kayak that didn't come with a Mirage drive. Maybe you you know you just want a break after a long day. But uh, I hope this helped y'all out. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until uh, next time.